Red velvet. Brown leather boots. Ooh. White cuffs. A red hat with a white pom pom. A white bushy beard. Wait, am I am I reading this right? Oh, it's Santa Claus. Oh. My mic on. Okay. Santa's mic'd up. Where do we begin? Ah, the story of Santa. Santa Claus, also known as Father Christmas, Saint Nicholas, Saint Nick, Kris Kringle, or simply Santa. You probably know him as a larger-than-life older man with a hearty laugh. Ho, ho, ho! That's the one. He delivers presents on one special night of the year to children all around the world. But how did this story of a man breaking and entering our homes to eat our cookies come about? And why does he wear red? The story of Santa Claus goes back hundreds of years to a bishop by the name of Saint Nicholas. Born in around 280 AD in what is now known as Turkey. Nicholas was known for his generosity, gift giving and particular warmth and kindness towards children and became the subject of many legends. It's not certain when he became a saint, but what is certain is that he acted like one, known for his good deeds and generosity, which laid the foundation for our Christmas tale. Over the centuries, the legend of Saint Nicholas spread throughout Europe. Each culture added its own touches. In the Netherlands, he was known as Sinterklaas. In England, Father Christmas. In Germany, Christkind. These figures, although distinct, shared the common trait to bring gifts during the Christmas season. Others gave him a reindeer-pulled sleigh, like young Rudolf here. Then in 1823, Clement Clark Moore's famous poem, Twas the Night Before Christmas, really set these ideas in stone, with the final touch coming from Civil War cartoonist Thomas Nast, who added the North Pole workshop to Santa's story. Where you going, Rudolph? Where you going? It's a good Rudolph. Over in the UK, they had Father Christmas, a character created to be a personification of Christmas cheer, feasting and merrymaking in the tough, cold months. <laughs> Dating back as far as the 15th century, he was pictured in art and literature as a large man in green robes lined with fur who would watch over festivities as a fun-loving partying character. This era began to merge the traditions of Europe's Saint Nicholas with the UK's Father Christmas, with the two characters eventually combining to create the mythical character known to the rest of the English-speaking world as Santa Claus. Over time, Santa has gradually gained companions, introduced through poems, stories, and pictures. Santa. Depicting each in new ways, adding to Santa's story. The elves that help him make his toys and work in his workshop. His wife, Mrs. Claus, to keep him company the rest of the year. And Rudolph, arguably the most iconic of Santa's reindeer with his famous red nose. Boop. <laughs> Rudolph was a surprisingly late addition to Christmas lore. In 1939, department store copywriter Robert L. May was asked by his bosses to create a fun Christmas story that could be given out to their customers. He wrote the story of Rudolph and his bright red nose, navigating Santa's sleigh for a foggy night. Other names included Rollo and Reginald, but Rudolph rolled nicely off the tongue. So when did Santa start wearing red? You've probably heard it was in Coca-Cola's ad campaigns, but they didn't. It wasn't them. He started featuring in ads as early as the 19th century, like the US confection company Sugar Plums and the cover of Humor magazine Puck. In 1931, Coca-Cola began placing ads in popular magazines. Coke wanted their campaign to show a wholesome Santa who was both realistic and symbolic. 
and commissioned illustrator Haddon Sun Bloom. The idea was to ensure people continued to drink Coke during the winter months, as the drink was usually associated with warm summer days. And why do we now find Santa at the mall? You know, what, what, what's the deal? What's the deal with that? Why is he at the mall? Santa, can I get a PS5? No. Please? No. Oh, you suck, Santa. You need to leave. This tradition can be credited to the entrepreneurial genius of James Edgar. When in 1890, he got the idea to dress up as Santa in his department store in Massachusetts. This practice became so popular that in 1937, Charles W. Howard, a passionate Santa impersonator, established the Charles W. Howard Santa School, the oldest continuously run such school in the world. We already did a video on that. Check it out here. So now you know a bit more about the large man who comes down your chimney to give you presents, eat your cookies, and drink your milk. <clears throat> and from all of us here at Great Big Story, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays to one and all. Now. Here. Oh, good. Whoa. 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 Sit. Sit. When you feel stuck. Ah. <laughs> yeah, you just bring out. Yeah, you bring out and see what he does. There he is. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. <bye. laughs> <laughs> It's a hard working life as an elf. Oh yeah, really hammer on oh, a hat. Stay. Yeah. So Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>